Wilbur Dale Wilkerson. I joined uh, the Army in 1948, and I retired from military in 1975. Right. Two wars, I was in the Korean War and the Vietnam War, and I hope I don't catch no more. <laughs> Hello, I'm Joe Holloway, and I'm your host for Eastern Shore Veterans, their story, their honor. Our mission is twofold, first to honor our veterans for their service to our country, and second to record a history for us and future generations, so we'll we remember the sacrifices they have made for our freedom. Today my guest is Mr. Wilbur Wil Wilkerson. That's it. Okay, Mr. Wilkerson lives in Pittsville at the current time and was is a U.S. Army veteran. Good afternoon. How are you, Mr. Wilkerson? Good, good. Good, good. good. Well, thanks for coming in. I understand you've had quite a career in the military. Well, I went in when I was 16. I wasn't nothing around here. My mother died and, and I, the home split up. And I didn't have no place where so I joined there. Went up to sign my father's name to the paper because I was an <laughs> So I went in, asked me where I wanted to go. I said, any place, you know, I, I passed a physical and Sent me to Fort Jackson, South Carolina, for a uh, basic. Did your drill sergeant know you were only 16? No. Yeah. See, I signed my uh, father's name. Right. I was 17. So I see. That's how I got so it. So they, they didn't know. Well, you were tall. You were pretty tall when you were 16. No, I was short. Oh, you were short then? Yeah, you hadn't, I was you, hadn't, short. you hadn't grown up all the way. When I went to Japan, I had to get, they had to issue me all new clothes. I went by, up about six inches. Is that right? Yeah. How about that? How about that? So yeah. between the time and all at once. How about that? So they you had a late, late growth spurt, spurt yeah. I guess. Maybe it was that food they were feeding. <laughs> I must have known what it was. And after that, I went to community communication school at Fort Monmouth, New Jersey. After that, they shipped me to Japan, occupation. And uh, after that, when the war broke out in Korea in 1950, where well, they sent all of us over there. They, and uh, we we'll spent a year over there, and like the frozen that I thought that was a cold place. So I got out, I got out, and stayed out about a year, then went back in. So you uh, you, you joined up twice. Yeah, joined yeah. up twice. Good, good. See what we got, we got a Truman's year. Everybody got extended a year you know, because of the Korean War, you know. But then I got out and I went back in. So I figured, what the heck is uh, You know, you want to make it, but it's money about $32 a month. And uh, they told me how much you make if you was in the Airborne. So I said, I'll join the Airborne, you know. So we went, and that guy came back and he looked at us, you know, and everything. He said, okay. He said, We'll send you to Fort Bragg, North Carolina. So this was in Fort Linwood, Missouri, we were processing. So I went from there to Fort Bragg, got in a nice outfit, sent me to jump school, and I thought they'd kill me then. That was rough. But I stuck it out, made my five jumps. And, well, it's six weeks of training then. Then last week you do nothing but jumping. So after I got my jump, five jumps in, got my wing, went to the unit, and I really love that. Now, did you go to Korea as a paratrooper the second uh, time? No, no. Okay. After I come out of there. Out of Korea. So yeah. your first your first trip to Korea was after you joined the first time. 1950. Yeah. yeah. And then when you come out of Korea, you... You got out of the I service. Got out. Uh -huh. Now, when you went back in the service, did you go back to Korea again? No. So no, you only have no, one no. service. Okay. Yeah. One. That was enough. That was enough. That was enough. No. Say it was cold over there, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's what I've heard. That I was just like a frozen death over yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. When we first went over, we didn't have the clothes that they had, so we just had the old wool overcoat and and buckle boots. Mm -hmm. And then the, they sent the uh, after we left, they sent the uh, the Mickey Mouse boots and Parker's and all that good stuff. Yeah. It was okay. So in Korea, were you infantry there? Yeah, yeah. So you were you were up in infantry the, all the time. All the time. Yeah. We went all the way up to the Yellow River. Uh huh. And uh, 
right? And then the Chinese came across the river just like flies and run us all the way back. So, but uh, other than that, I just get the hell out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got fed up with it. When when you were in Korea and the and the Chinese came across the border, you were infantry then. Yeah. What was that like? I mean, you you guys you just better took, get out of you there. Just took but, off. They tell us if you if you're in a truck and the truck runs out of gas, you set it on fire and you walk. Mm -hmm. And it'd be uh, some LPs in Saigon. What I fit you in this way, you go the other way. Yeah. That was in Korea, yeah. That was yeah. in Korea. Right, okay. Yeah. How did you get wounded the first time? Over there? Yeah, in Korea. Fighting them in a hell of a battle. Yeah. They uh, picked me out of a whole bunch. A bunch of them got, got wounded. Is that right? There was more yeah. than one of you got wounded? Yeah. yeah. How about the second time in Vietnam? How did you get wounded there? Uh, the second time... We had a good fire fight, and they got pretty hot, and I got it. Yeah. And the third time you got shrapnel, so I, I guess that was a mortar. About, was yeah. that a mortar or a landmine? Or yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They uh, threw some stuff on us. I see. I yeah. see. So after your your first tour of Korea, you got out for like a year, you say? I got out for a year. Yeah, and then you yeah. went back in, and went you back went in. as a paratrooper. Went in the paratrooper. You got through your paratrooper school. I stayed there uh -huh. the whole time. So from 53 until you stayed right in the military up in... Oh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. you were going to make a career out of it. Yeah. Yeah, I see, I see. So one war wasn't enough for you. <laughs> you had to find another one. But it started it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so you stayed in until Vietnam got started. I stayed in the Vietnam War. I spent... Uh, Three years over there fighting. In Vietnam. In Vietnam. Yeah. What year did you first go there? First time was 1960, 64. Uh-huh. Yeah. We went out and worked with the mountain people. And then... Uh, Is that called, that, were they called the Montarogs? Mountain people. Is that what they call them? Yeah. They just call them the mountain yeah, they people. they live in the mountains all the time. I see. I see. The French put them in there. And so... And once, once they know you, they're good people. They, now, you were an advisor. Really good people. In 64, you went as an advisor? Yeah. Is that what yeah. you were doing there? Yeah. So there wasn't, uh, say, a company of you folks, of our troops. There was just uh, spattering a few of you right. each yeah. with, with these yeah. folks. Yeah. And so. I rotated out there, went to 173rd Outborn. Uh-huh. Then 173rd went over. That was a good outfit. We yeah. made one combat jump. So you, you jumped in Vietnam? Yeah, yeah. I see. Okay. What did you do as an advisor over in Vietnam? Well, uh, same, what did you do as an advisor over in Vietnam? You fight right with them. You see, you work as a team. Me and a lieutenant, we go out one time, then the other two go out the next time. And whatever they wanted, if they get in a hot far fight, okay, the captain will tell you, can you, can you get me an airstrike? And I said, okay. We'll get an airstrike. They, we talked to the pilot. They said, uh, all right, where you at? And they would tell them, and we'd tell uh, Captain Pop Smoke. And they'd throw smoke at it. And I said, all right, go about uh, go east about uh, 200 meters from that smoke. You know, stuff like that. Okay. Now, yeah. working with the mountain people. There was up at, uh, most of them, Pleiku, up in that area. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you were an advisor, so you basically live with these folks. Oh, you have to. Yeah. You, yeah. Lived, you lived right with them. They right didn't, with them. Yeah. yeah. And you ate their food. and, and right. They wash right. clothes. They give you, say, okay, this is your latest. She will wash your clothes and everything. Mm -hmm. Cook for you. But uh, we done her most cooking if we didn't eat with them. They like for us to eat with them. I see. Yeah. I see. And then uh, after I left from there, went to 173rd, back over, and uh, stayed there with them. And then uh, next time, I went back with a advisor to the Vietnamese Rangers. And that's the way I, they were good, real good people. It was uh, four of us attached to the 
Vin, these rangers, two of us go to field at a time, you know. When they go, we go, you know. We rotate it. It was nice. It yeah. wasn't bad. Did they, um, <clears throat> what was their job going out, the rangers? Well, you go out there with them and uh, you get in a far fight. Uh, they need an airstrike or artillery. Well, we get, we get that for them. That's what yeah. you did, called in air yeah. strikes and artillery yeah. and things Whatever like that. Whatever they needed, we helped them. Did you ever have any incidents of friendly fire where you called in stuff too close or, or, the, no. or the Air Force made a mistake no, or we, something we, like that? Uh, we threw smoke at it. I see. And tell them how far mm -hmm. to go away, uh, mm -hmm. you know, on the smoke, mm -hmm. you know. So they they pretty good. So they they were really interested in fighting for the freedom of their country. Oh yeah. Yeah, they yeah. Were, they yeah. Were, they really were. I've heard about the um, the the mountain people. They said they were very brave. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I don't know how true it is, but I I heard that the advisors was with them, and they got captured. Uh, they had no communication. I don't know how they do it, but they they. Uh, VC or North Vietnamese captured American, and that afternoon they had him back. Now how they done it, I had no idea. Yeah. About that, about that. They they do they know their signals in the mountains, you know. So how long did you serve with the mountain people? One 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 tour. One tour, one yeah. whole tour, and then you got to come home after that tour. Yeah, it rotated. Uh -huh. Okay. Back right. to Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Uh -huh. And then you train. What'd you do when you were back at Fort Bragg? Were you a sergeant? Just training. Just, just train, training, yeah. training troops that were going to go to Vietnam? Yeah, Is that what you training. were doing? Uh huh. So people, most of us, um, tell them, you know, what to look for when you come over to Vietnam. Right. You know, they, uh, some of them liked this and some didn't, uh, the Vietnamese. So you had to watch yourself over there. The kids, they would slip a hand grenade down your gas tank. And that's one thing you had to look for, you know. So how could you tell? <laughs> you, you know, you soon let her to learn how to look right. for, you know. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. You don't want to be riding down the street and blow right through the air. Right, you know? right. Uh, so after, you're, after you come back to Fort Bragg and train for a while, what year did you go back the second tour to Vietnam? We went back in 1968. We hit the Tet Offensive. That's when uh, they tried to take the whole Vietnam. Uh, right. That was a hell of a battle. Yeah. Now, were you with the South Vietnamese Rangers then? Yeah. I see. Yeah. I see. Uh, with them. And uh, after how they got the weapons in, they uh, they bring a casket. Nobody knows it. Thought you know somebody got killed. And they bring a casket in, and put it in the hole. But the damn casket was full of weapons. So when Ted Offensive come in, they they come in and dig up the casket, and all of them had the weapons. They're pretty yeah. smart yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they they um, they you know we've read about this Ho Chi Minh Trail, how how they brought everything yeah. down through red, that. Red and, nice, yeah. You know. And the Ho Chi Minh Trail wasn't really a highway or a road. No, it was just no, a network no. of, of, of... It was blowed all the pieces. Yeah. And then they, uh, they stopped us, stopped them from uh, bombing Ho Chi Minh Trail. Uh -huh. At the same time, they made us stop uh, bombing the Hanoi. And that gave them a free ticket, come south with any kind of equipment they want. They, yeah. The GIs never lost war. Washington lost the Unders war. Un Understand. Yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah, it was a political war, unfortunately, yeah. unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Well, you were over there in 1968, and um, I understand you met somebody pretty special while you were over there. Well, Let's tell us a little bit I about got, that. I got wounded. I went to the hospital. But dust off came out, picked me up, took me long bend at the hospital. Doug was strapped right out of my back. And uh, I told her, uh, I, kn I knew this lady a little bit, so uh, I asked the doctor, I said, I get the hell out of here. He said, how you feel okay? I said, yeah, I feel good. So I went to her house, and every morning she'd change bandage, and that night, you know, clean it all up. We got the, 
We, we took the bandage away from the Navy. <laughs> but uh, that's how I met my, met this girl. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, her brother, we uh, met him. Yeah. yeah. And, you, and you married her. And I married her. It was funny, we had, uh, when we were getting ready to leave for Vietnam, we uh, had to get married. Yeah. We were just living together over there. So uh, I had to do it fast because we were getting ready to move out. Because they lied to us. They said we weren't going nowhere because they would stop before they come inside guy. Well, they was, they was moving all their stuff out. Yeah. So last day, they said, you got to have a license, I mean, a marriage license and get that girl out of there. And I, I said, got it, damn. So I went down there and I seen this Vietnamese major that I knew, real good friend. I said, look, I, I got my, I got to get like, married license. So he done it for me. He stamped it and everything. He got papers and everything, you know. So I took it back and showed it to him. said, okay. Said, Tonight, you're going to last one out. If you're not there, you get left behind. Because they already had a plane getting out. So I took the kids and we went out on runway. We just waited and waited and waited. I took four more kids out with me because their father and mother couldn't get over there to get them. And they'd pick them up in California. So uh, about two in the morning, here come an airplane in. And he hit and turned around and tailgate come down and all of us run, jump, jumped on it. And he went straight up because they was taking Saigon down. See? All that weapon going in. Bang, bang, all that jump. So we ended up in the Philippines. So uh stayed there in the Philippines. Well, it wasn't bad in the Philippines. We had stayed there and had a tent and had bunks and everything. And then the Phil uh Hancho of the Philippines said, We don't want them no more. You're gonna have to move out of here. And uh so they packed us up and we moved to Guam. <laughs> Got to Guam. Oh, it was terrible. They give you a uh tent with no bed. He just got a mattress. And I had these kids with us. I said, okay, so we went to eat the next morning at breakfast, and it was rotten. I mean, it was terrible food. So uh, I said, I'm going to get out of here. So I went and seen, a, I went and seen, a, a, had people there from an embassy uh, find out who's going where. You know, I said, look, if I ain't out of here on the next damn plane, I'm calling Washington. I said, okay. I said, I'll see what's going to happen. So about three in the afternoon, four in the afternoon, and they called me. I said, get your family ready. It's an American airline coming in, and I'm going to put you on it. So I said, good, good. So that way we went to uh, Hawaii two hours, then went to uh, California. From California, I went to uh, BWI, that was where my si uh, sister picked us up. Yeah, uh, hmm. Pretty good life. Yeah. Now, you, you said you brought these kids out, Yeah. these four children. Now, their parents had already gotten out of the country? They they they, they were going to school. I see. The, the old man was going to school, uh, every and, issue school. And what year was this, in like 68? This was 75. Oh, this is when Vietnam was getting ready to yeah. fall. Yeah. So how, did you stay in Vietnam from 68 to 75? Yeah. Okay. See, I, got, I went back and retired, went over there to work. Oh, okay. All right. So I worked as a civilian. There. So you, you retired out of the Army yeah. in 68 or 69. They gave me a really good job and mm -hmm. a lot of mm -hmm. a triple pay for what I was making. Mm -hmm. That's why not. So you went back to Vietnam as a I civilian employee. I went back and worked as a civilian, civilian employee. What did you do there then? Uh, it's about the same thing I'd done with uh, uh, when I was in the military. Training? Yeah. Training the other people, so. Yeah. So were you a little bit covert, they call it? Yeah. You, they didn't really, you weren't really, didn't really know about you being there. Yeah, so, uh, that's good. Yeah. So you, these, these kids, these four kids you got out, their parents were in the United States. Yeah. And so you got them out and finally you got them back to their, yeah. their family. They were, at, uh, the parents were in uh, at the airport waiting on them. Uh-huh, I see. Uh, I bet that was some reunion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was some reunion, yeah. 
And your right. wife, you've stayed married to her for what, 48 years now? That's How it. How about that? How about yeah. that? Well, she that's. Could, uh, took good care of it. Yeah. So in 75, when you were trying to get out of the country, yeah. that's when every, that's when that's Saigon. That's when they took over. That's when they were getting ready to take over. That's so you were up over. against the wall as far as getting out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was time, time to leave. So. Um, yeah, about, it was, I guess there was about 15 of us. Is that right? Laying yeah. out there that night. How about that? Yeah. Can you explain a little bit more how that took place? Well, they tell you, Mike V, I mean, not Mike V, but uh, the Emerson people. Okay, if you, you take your family out here and you stay out there until your uh, airplane. Now, airplane's supposed to get in, but if they can't, you're left behind. This is it. So about 2 o'clock in the morning, we hear... C-130 coming in. The guy standing in the door with a machine gun because they're taking side guns. See. So when he flipped around, turned around, the tailgate come down and all of us rushed, jumped right on the plane and the tailgate come up and we left right straight up in the air. So the plane barely stopped. The plane barely stopped. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah it just did. Yeah. He just, when he turned around, the tailgate was down and we, we had to get on there fast. And it was you and your wife and four kids that belonged to somebody yeah, else. Was, yeah, about fifteen of us. And then there was then there was ten more people or whatever, yeah, nine more yeah. people. I see. And they didn't they didn't have any relationship to you. The no, other people no. didn't. Okay. No. Now were they firing on that airplane as it was landing? I don't think so. I don't think so. But it they was too busy taking a Saigon. But you were in the last moments of being able to leave. Right. That's yeah. it. If I'd miss that, I'd been in Hanoi jail. See? Now, was that about the same time when they were evacuating the embassy and the helicopters were oh, that was, in? That was, yeah. That was, uh, they, that, they was all messed up. i never seen them so messed up in all my life. That chopper was falling off the side of the uh, boat, you know, and they were throwing kids across the fence. Or get them out, you know. So you seen all that? Oh yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, and I, they said, okay. So what we're going to do? You go in another area. Now you go in Tonsonuk and sign up there, and they'll tell you what to do. So went there, and they said, all right, now we're going to leave now. He said, you go, and I, we're, uh, they told us where to go. So we went there, and we just lay down until the the plane come in. We heard him coming. I said, God damn it, that's it. So uh, we all run joking. <laughs> yeah. That must have been quite a feeling when you got on that plane, wasn't it? You better believe it, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, it, was, it was a relief, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. We left behind. And I, mean, I guess at that point in time, you never thought you'd be going back. No. And your wife probably didn't think they'd ever... See her family was, again? She never went back until, I think it was 1990. I see. The first time she went back home. Uh -huh. Was she in contact with her family over the years? No. <laughs> really? Okay. That was, that was, uh, that was it, mm -hmm. you know. She just went back and uh, I don't know how they found out, but they found out in some way. They met her at the airport. Okay. Yeah. And brought her on home. Uh-huh. Yeah. Now that that had to be an interesting that had to be interesting for that to to happen the first time when oh, she went yeah. back. Yeah. And what for what was the first year you went back over there with her? Oh, it was after that. Uh huh. Well, she came hollering, you know. She said, uh, "Everybody wants to see you. They want to see my husband." You know. I said, no, "Are you sure about it?" She said, "It is quiet and real nice. People treat you different from what they did before." You know. So I took a chance, went over there for a couple of weeks. Right. And then, uh, pretty good. I said, well, next time, maybe I'll go for a month, you know. And they uh, pick us up at the airport, and, and uh, we had a place to stay in Saigon. Her, uh, some relation to her owned this uh, uh, veterinarian place there in Saigon. So we go there and uh, stay there overnight. Because we always get in all the while. We always get in about 11 o'clock at night. So we'd go there and stay. And next day she'd go shopping, get meat and stuff. And then the uh, next day we'd go to her house. And, uh, and 
So it, it wasn't bad, but, mm -hmm. you know. There was something different and no problem. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about Vietnam, the country. It, it, well, I go over there every year. That's what I understand. And it's a beautiful country now. Mm -hmm. All the, when we were over there fighting when we first got there, there nothing but dirt roads and all the mess. Up. But now, all roads are blacktop, and you won't even see a little teeny piece of concertina war. Nothing, nothing mm -hmm. like we left it. It was, I mean, everything is so mm -hmm. pretty. Mm -hmm. They invited me, where I went down, down to Delta. So I was only an American, not down two or three hundred miles from there, you know. Only ones they know is Saigon. Right. So I was down there, and uh, this guy came and said, we're going to have a, a get-together. What we want to do is thank uh, the people that left that came back and uh, help the mother and father to uh, build them a new home. It was real nice. So I said, okay, I'll go. So... About five in the morning, here comes a staff car, pick pick us up, me and my wife. So we went up there and they had a breakfast. Uh, I had steak and eggs and a couple slices of tomatoes and home fries. Everything was free, everything. So I had breakfast. Then we went over to this uh, community building. They had dancing girls and uh, bands and everything in there. Then they got up. And, and uh, some people got up there and told them how they had to leave. They'd come back. And uh, then uh, after they got down to all of this here, yak yak in their jaws, we went to the big mess, uh, restaurant. I mean, big, nice, had about a three or four course meal wow. and uh, nothing. Beautiful food, mm -hmm. you know, and had a Fifth of whiskey sitting right on the. Wow. <laughs> and what year was this? Oh, let's see. About, hmm, about three years ago, three, three or four years, years ago. Okay. Right. Yeah. So your wife still has family over there. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they aren't they in a own farms or something? Or? Yeah, yeah. They're down in the way down in the Delta. We, we, I, first time I went down, I only went for a couple of weeks. Because I didn't know what the hell was going to happen, you know. So everything went pretty good. So I told my wife, I said, maybe next time I would stay for a month, you know. So we would stay for a month. That month we we would travel around to where I used to be at. Nothing there. Nothing. But beautiful. The new houses and everything, you know. I was uh, went, I was up at uh, Nui Baden. That's a big mountain down there. And uh, we got there and held in. It fenced in, and they were selling the souvenirs. I see. Yeah, I said, hey, look at this here, you know. And, and nice, big uh, dual highway going into it from Saigon, you know. So I uh, went to three or four or more different places. See, you can rent a cab over there. You get the driver, everything, for uh, $100. That's all day, all day. Uh, the driver and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So we went all traveled all over where I used to be at. And, right. And uh, nothing, nothing. You couldn't even tell where mm -hmm. you was at. Mm -hmm. They got a, a nice houses built in there. And, yeah, real nice. Yeah. So Vietnam, as if you didn't know it, had been a war there, you oh, wouldn't no, know it. No. You wouldn't know it now. You wouldn't and know your it. Your economy's doing yeah. good. And, I advised uh, the guys that been over there, who were fighting them. I think they should go back. And just look around and see, find out where they were at, you know, because mm -hmm. it's no more. Yeah. It's all gone. And there's no hostility toward, toward you, no hostility toward you oh, when you no, go back? No, this no. Is, yeah, I see. No. I see. I mean, they, I'd walk down the street there at uh, her village, and they'd call me and have coffee with them. Is that right? Yeah. Real. Well, I sat down. We went, they got a place over there just like Disney World. And I was watch, going to watch this show. And uh, this guy, he was in the uh, service, Vietnamese, you know. So we got talking. He said, yeah, I said, uh, what we figure, 
you had a job to do. You had a boss. We had a job to do. We had a boss. Now it's over. And uh, we shook hands. And that was it. Mm -hmm. About Treat you real nice. Good, 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 good. And your wife, what kind of crops do they grow? Well, she, she planted, uh, she got about 100, about 140, 150 mango trees uh -huh. over there on her land. She she got pretty good in a lot of land. But her brother gave it uh, hot peppers, rice, some corn, stuff like that. Yeah. You know. Just basically different different yeah. kinds of farming. Yeah. Yeah, how about made, their equipment? How about their equipment? Do they have modern farm equipment? Like yeah, they, they got uh, now they use water, uh, use water buffaloes. Now they got tractors. Yeah, go right in the rice paddy, mud, keep it right on, ply it all that, uh -huh. and then they plant stuff, uh, plant your rice in there, and when they get ready to harvest, here come another kind of machine goes through there, just like we do hay here. So they've modern, they've modernized. Yeah, pretty well over there. yeah. How about that? And they bailed it all up. And then here's a, they got this other kind of tractor, turbo. <laughs> Go in there and uh, they throw all the rice about a bag uh, or stuff on it, yeah, and uh, haul it away. Yeah. Then the people from side got to come down here and give you uh, how much they get for it. They so get two or three people, you know, whoever gets the most, you know, we, that's what we sell. Well, I asked you this question. Did you see any chicken houses when you were over there? Yeah. Okay. Right. They do have chicken houses. Sort of like what we have? They, they got, well, they're nothing big, you know, but they have, I think, uh, her brother's, her brother's son, he uh, was working on a chicken plant, you know, post chicken house. And I think they had about five or 10,000 chickens. So they grow they commercially, yeah. not just backyard flocks, but commercially yeah. they have. Yeah. Yeah. They come a long way. Yeah. 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 You said you got wounded yeah. um, while you were over there. Um, that was in 68. I got, I got shot in Korea, too. Oh, you got shot twice. I got shot three times. Three times. One in Korea and two in Vietnam. Well, your, your, your Korean War wound, I guess it wasn't real serious, or was it, or? No, there wasn't too. Right. Yeah, they, once in a while, you know, cloudy, you get uh, my back like, hard, uh, you know, mm -hmm. hurt like hell. But other than that, yeah. You know, so then Vietnam, you got wounded twice. Twice. Twice over there. Yeah. And the second time is when you met your wife. Yeah. 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 Now. She's um, my nurse. She was your nurse. Yeah, that's all right. Well, she's made a good one, hadn't she? She's been around this long, 48 years. Yeah. yeah something like that. So, yeah. um, so you got three Purple Hearts. Yeah. Three Purple yeah. Hearts. Yeah. yeah. And I understand you've got some other medals. Oh, a bunch of them. Yeah. Yeah. $25 and all the medals, you get a cup of coffee with Right, I know. Yeah. I know. But they... Yeah. But it's an honor to have those. Not yeah. everybody can say yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Used to be, it was all right. Yeah. But now, you go get a medal, and they care less. I say, I say. Well, not everybody. Some people care. I guess. Yeah, I yeah. yeah. Some people do. They might not say it, but they do. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway. So when you got wounded the last time, and you you, you met your wife. Yeah. That's when you decided to get out of the service and go back into. Yeah. And and, and you, you entered. Back, where, they gave me a good job and uh, told me what they were going to do, you know. And the price, I mean, they pay good money. So why not, you know? So I took a crack at it. Did that count toward your retirement? Did that count toward your retirement as far as your military? That was retirement? extra, yeah. That was extra, okay, yeah, okay. Extra. Good, good, yeah. good, good. Yeah. Well, that's interesting about getting out. At yeah. 75, trying to get the folks out of the country, yeah, you read yeah. a lot about that. A lot of people were under pressure. I go by. We got a right now. We got. Uh, I'll show you a picture sometime. We got a beautiful home right on the Mekong River. Is that right? They built this house for us, all cement, and that house looked like something that a, a mansion. And they've done all cement. Then they built me steps going down to the river. Where I could sit that night with my lawn chair and fish. What kind oh. of fish do you catch? What kind of fish do you catch? Ah, oh, they look like they look like a catfish. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. 
right. Yeah. How about that? How about that? So you go back once a year? Once a year we go. Right, right. Yeah, we yeah. leave. We leave in January and come back in the end of March. And that's a good time to be gone. That's it. Yeah. That's winter. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's what we over. try to do. And that's their their warm season over there. Of course, yeah. I guess it's warm we, there all the time. We call the kids. It has the weather over there. It's yeah. warm, Dad. All right, we'll be home. Is that right? <laughs> well, how many kids do you have over there? Over where? in Vietnam? Do you have children? Oh, two. In Viet two in Vietnam. Yeah. They yeah. live there. Okay. Yeah. And you have two in Hawaii. You say three. Yeah. Three in Hawaii. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. so that's um. That's interesting. That, you, you know, you've talked. I've talked to a lot of people that's been in the service, but it's very interesting that you've gone back. You know, it's, uh, I ask people. You know, well, I, I tell them, I say I'm going back to Vietnam. They believe it. They don't believe it. Is that right? Yeah, no. Yeah. They say, Are you crazy? Yeah. In fact, uh, I'm in a VA hospital, and they was had an appointment for me in uh, February. I said I can't do that. I'll be going to Vietnam. She looked at me. What? I said, I'm going. <laughs> I'm going over on vacation. She said, Are you crazy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so. So, yeah. But it's uh, it's nice over there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's um, it's nice that you've had you had a good experience out oh, of yeah. the end of it. You know, yeah. and in the, in the house that we uh, down on the road. So we got two houses. Mm -hmm. Her brother takes care of. They got a big brown table, and they keep that table full of fruit while I'm there. Is that right? All kind of fruit. Yeah. Well, you don't eat that much fruit when you're home. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you grew up in Gumboro, right? Whitesville. Whitesville and Gumboro. Uh -huh. right and you were on a farm. Yeah. And. Um, you say your mom died when you were young. When I was 13. And you were 13. And you had, what, four brothers and sisters? Or? Uh, I had uh, one sister and uh, two little ones at that time, three right. sisters. Okay. And uh, she died, and the old man couldn't tend to her, so the grandmother took the kid of two little ones. So about six months later, Peggy got married. That left me there with him. And he wants to go out and do this and do that. And so I just got tired of it. And I said, I'm going to do something. Because there wasn't nothing else around there. Work-wise, there wasn't know, much going I was, on. We was working for Jim Birmingham, you know. And then uh, nothing. So I said, the hell with it. For, for a 16-year-old, you, you stepped from being on the farm in the rural area to... That's it. Yeah, that's yeah. That was a big yeah. big difference in your lifestyle there. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Changed that is, life. Now, when you first got the basic training, I guess you thought the somebody had lowered the boom on you when they were... Well, I tell you, I went in there, didn't know nothing. Never been out of Gumber or Whitefield, you know. And uh, this guy... Uh, Drill sergeant I said, "Come here." So I went over to him. And said, "I'm gonna make a soldier out of you." I said, "I'm gonna feed you in the morning. I'm gonna burp you, and then your ass is going out there to work." <laughs> <laughs> so I made up pretty good after I got done everything. It come over, shook my hand, you know. As a young kid, you done pretty good. Yeah. You know, I guess at that time. You know, sitting here talking to you now, you're 80 years old, 84 years old. When you you talk to these folks, you have to realize they're only 16 or 18 years yeah. old. You know, it's a big difference in, in it back is. Yeah. there. Yeah. And um, that was quite a quite a feat. That I've you had a, one hell of a life. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It sounds like it. it sounds like it. Yeah. You're. Um, I grew up in the army. Might as well say I grew yeah. up. That yeah. Yeah. That was that was your home when yeah. you, you got out. Um, Probably a lot of folks went in the service during that time because they didn't have enough food at home and That's it. And, and no That's jobs and things like that. So sometimes um, I'd have to sleep in the park. Is that right? Because Peggy lived out of town, I either that or walk and too too far. So I just sleep in there. I go to James Birmingham's parking uh, place and sleep in there. I see. I see. Yeah. So. Well, it sounded like other than... That's been when I got to, tired of it, I said, do something. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, it sounds like the military, other than you getting shot three times, it treated you pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they trained me good. Yeah, uh, yeah. They, uh, well, you get shot, you get a rest. Right. You know? Yeah. Like happened in uh, Korea. They sent me all the way back. They dug it out in Korea, but never sewed me up until I got to Japan. Hmm. And about three or four days in there, then they come by and sewed me up. I see. I said, what the hell's going on, you know? So what'd you get shot with the first time? A rifle or was it um, right. shrapnel? Or, right, uh -huh. yeah, I got a bullet. Yeah, and right Viet the... in Vietnam, was it bullet or was it um, shrapnel? One of them was shrapnel and the other one was a bullet. I see. See, it's bad. Vietnamese are short and I'm tall. Well, when they say, okay, uh, that that's American because he's tall. They can spot me a mile away, you know. And who's they going to shoot? It's going to shoot me. <laughs> it's worse than having a radio on your back. Right? Yeah. Get the hell away from me. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Yeah, there wasn't no it, radio close to it. And, and, and the officers didn't want you to salute them out in the field either when you're <laughs> yeah. out there like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they, uh, yeah how about that? <laughs> Yeah, I guess you were serving when you were serving with the um, mountain people or the um, range the Vietnamese Rangers. You were you were the tall guy in the group. That's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You had a target yeah. on your back pretty yeah. pretty all the time. So yeah. Anyway, yeah. So, um, is there anything I've not asked you that you would like to talk about? No, no. I said it. Yeah, Just yeah. Military. Uh -huh. we got out. My yeah. wife. Yeah. We got yeah. a job. And uh, I, I quit drinking when I left Vietnam, and then I quit smoking, and we had done pretty good. Mm -hmm. We uh, now where did you work when you come home in '75 when you finally got settled down? I was working on. They had a something from the government. Where I worked at the city dump. Uh huh. And then I got a job at uh, Purdue driving feed trucks. Okay. And then the VA came out there and said. Uh, you would like to go to school. I said, what do you mean, go to school? He said, well, we will, VA, you can go to any school you want. Uh, so uh, I went to uh, refrigeration, air conditioning, and plumbing school. Well, they paid, paid me, and I was like OJT, I used to uh, work for this company. They'd pay me, and VA would pay me. I see. Okay. So I went to complete that, and uh, well, nighttime we'd go to uh, World War Tech. Yeah. Uh, and daytime we'd, we'd be working and find out how to do it. I see. I see. Yeah. Who'd you work for? Who did you work for? Uh, Cliff. What the hell was his name? He had a big air conditioning plant here in Salisbury. Griffin. Griffin's. Griffin yeah. Heat and Air. Okay. Yeah, I remember yeah, that. that. Yeah, was, I see. It was, it was two of us on JT. I see. I see. Yeah. I see. yeah. So. Got through that. Then you retired when you were what, sixty-five or seventy or something. No, like I that? went on. I, I, uh, when I was sixty-eight, I went to Social Security and I asked them how much they'd pay, and I, I'd get paid if I, I quit work. So they told me I, I quit. Yeah. Yeah. So I went back. So I had a. Uh, I worked for the Housing Authority. They, I worked for them about oh, maybe eighteen, twenty years. Oh, okay. All right. Over on Boo Street. I right. see. Okay. For hood. Okay. Taking care of the. the so I figured I take that money, my retirement from the army, and Social Security at seventeen hundred dollars a month. Mm -hmm. I make a good living. Right. And so I got out, got out, and then I worked down in Ocean City part time. My wife did too. She had a daycare for uh, I think maybe twenty years. I see. But she'd uh, weekdays and then weekends she'd go to Ocean City and clean apartments. I see. see? Mm -hmm. And when, when I retired, I said, we got to pay all the bills off. So we went and paid the house off, the cars off, everything. We didn't know nobody. We could just sit back and relax. But we still worked a little. You, know, you, can, you just can't. I can't. I can't be still. You got to keep moving. It's. I think you stay healthier. Right. I think yeah. you stay healthier. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, your wife's a little younger than you are, isn't she? She's seventy. 
She's you seven. don't look it, but she yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's been seventy for the last three years. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How about that? How about that? Yeah, yeah. How about that? Well, you were in Vietnam. You were thirty-four year old. Yeah. Right? 32, yeah. 34, something? 30, 30. You were an old guy to be in Vietnam. I know. Most of, those, most of the fellows in Vietnam were 19 yeah. and 20 and 21. And yeah. So yeah. when you, you were over there, you, you were well, a we, lot older than, than normally, you know, folks over there. They didn't care what your age. Yeah. You're young, oh, you get shot at. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I expect so. I expect you so. You got a job to do. Yeah. Be yeah. a platoon sergeant or uh -huh. you be a visor. There, you know, mm -hmm. whatever they put you on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But your knowledge, being from Korea, you know, being, whatever you, yeah, you're well trained for. Your, yeah, your knowledge was invaluable over there. I'm yeah. sure. I'm That's sure it. to them. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. Mr. Wilkerson, thank yeah. you for your service to our country, and thank you for coming in. This has been a real interesting <laughs> conversation. It really has been. So. Glad to help you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and that's our show for today. I want to thank Mr. Wilbur Wilkerson for coming in. If you are a veteran or know a veteran that would like to be interviewed, give us a call at PAC-14. The numbers are listed below. Thank you.